Okay. So the volume should be good here. Now, a welcome everyone. I have um, in front of me a replay, but in reality, it's just a replay of uh, Smogon Tour, which is currently undergoing right now as we await our players of the grand finals of the GSC Invitational. The two money makers, they're guaranteed to make money out of this tournament, and their names are Kenix in the winner's bracket and Hyogo Fodex. And here today, I am with, at least for now, TC. Um, um, hi, everyone. I'm, I'm kind of sick, so sorry for, for my bad voice. Um, today, we have um, probably, if you ask uh, the, the GSC community um, before the tournament to begin, if they were expecting to see a Kenix or, or Hyoga on the finals, then the answer will be no so yeah that's true they were having they were having um two of the most improbable of the players in one of the most improbable of the finals so this is something like um, that everyone likes you know um and they will need to to prove tonight that they are true champions of, of gsc you know definitely um when you see players like um, friend of Mr. Golden or, or Tony Flygon, even Airworm, it's like um, when you see the replays, you see that they are true champions of GSC without even winning a fucking tournament, you know? <laughs> um, this can be the, the beginning for something good um, for Hyoga, even after that disastrous SPL he had the last year. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this can also be the beginning for something to, to a player like Kenix, which is technically starting his Pokemon career right right now. Do you have any um, info as to when Kenix began? While we're still waiting for Kenix and Hyoga to prepare, maybe we're actually waiting for a uh, another Smogon tour game to to start actually. So um, yeah, there is quite a bit of waiting. But yeah, do you have any intel insight on this uh, on Kenix? Because I've seen him sign up in like Pokemon Perfect League. That might have been one of the first times I saw or heard him being mentioned um, last year. Well, uh, um, I'm pretty sure I I had to play against Kenix in in the tournament where I lost against Airworm on finals. Okay. Um, and yeah. He's not like, and he's not the kind of player that. Um, tends to join the, their opponent, you know? He's the kind of player that likes to play as soon as possible. So, um, I think if, if the game is being delayed, it's, it's not for, for Kenix right now. Um, Kenix also has the, this kind of reckless play style. Okay. <laughs> it's like he, he, he always likes to, to do the big, big play. <laughs> and, all right, all right. And, and sometimes he... It's like he doesn't know when when to stop, you know. Um, and the thing that surprises me about Kenix on this tournament is that um, it looks like um, their opponents um, did not know how to take advantage from from this. And it, it, I guess maybe he changed it a, a little bit his playstyle. I don't know. Um, I also don't really see. Um, from Kenix to, um, to see something like innovative or, or too crazy, he he will bring solid the squad. Um, so you say he's Hyoga, a good builder, um, or he uses uh, good teams? Most of the, yeah, I think most of the teams he uses are are not be, made by him, but um, that doesn't really matter. But he he uses solid stuff. Um, when we talk about Hyoga, um, um, we talk about a player that has been around for many years. Um, um, he, I, I think he mained GSC from like 2015 or something like that. Mm. Um, so, so he has experience on, on this. Now um, he, I, I, I'm going to mention it again, but he, he 
is coming from having this really bad SPL. Um, and I think he has proven on, on this tournament that, that he's not dead yet and he can still play at top level. Yeah, so um, Hyoga is an interesting player, at least for me. I'm, I'm very much surprised to see him. Uh, and what I mean with that is that I never really got a chance to see him play that much besides as before SPL. Um, I was supposed to face him in my first ever team tournament for Pokemon Perfect League, but he uh, didn't play. I don't think he played a single game or if he played, he, he, he didn't care so much about the tournament, which is understandable. I mean, I guess um, for certain tournaments you sign up with the expectation of getting certain players in then you get drafted and you're wondering oh who's this guy i have to play like cherry bong never heard of him. like i i was a 3k player in a tournament of very well somewhat low level play and and i was in the second so slot I, I was wondering why he didn't end up facing um bomber on my team at the time but but yeah so then when when this event finally came around, I don't think I recorded any matches of Hyoga, but I was pretty surprised to see the games that I did manage to get a catch a glimpse of. And I also kind of like his teams. I like that he isn't afraid of using, um, of straying away from the typical Curse Snorlax um, offense styles. So he uses a lot of, he's I've seen, We've seen him use Sleep Talk uh, Snorlax with like Earthquake, which is. Uh... Yeah, well, um, from Kyoga, um, it's like you can maybe expect to see some some kind of surprise set that you're not you're not expecting, or at least his opponent is not going to expect. But I, I don't really expect him to bring something really crazy here. <laughs> He's most likely going to bring one solid team and try to, to get the win. Um, they are also going to play in two possible best of five formats. Right, let's, uh, yeah, let's address one of the, the yeah. elephant in the room because the uh, viewers aren't aware of this unless they've watched my last video, which was like two weeks ago. Um, this tournament has the semi i think loser semis up all the way up to the grand finals with a best of five set so we're gonna be here for a bit <laughs> and um yeah we're pretty much just yeah yeah <laughs> um i think um when i voted uh, i think i initially thought that the, the, the tournament was going to be single elimination but Best of five in, in the whole elimination <laughs> just doesn't make sense to me, to be honest. Okay. So hopefully we are not going to see a style tonight. Well, there was a lot of unexpected stuff. Uh, for yeah. one, one unexpected thing was, I guess, one, one thing, thing we, I, I, I definitely, definitely expected was having more, more people commentating besides myself. And, and this, this isn't to, to um, shit on any of the players or stuff like that but for crying out loud like i'm not i'm not nearly as knowledgeable as you or as um uh diophantine or earthworm or zakuru and i'm kind of embarrassed not to mention i get very tired even after a best of three so i think you i think you're going to be fine the, the problem is that i i can just um accompany you you know I'm fucking sick right now. Yeah, yeah if we can, <laughs> but freaking um, start. I think they're going to be fine. If they can uh, start, that is. But I, I don't know. I I, I felt like, like clicking the record button now, now but, but um, yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't, doesn't look, look like, like it's happening, happening yet. yet. Yeah. But, but I don't I know when Soul Wind's next game, game is starting here. here. Oh my god.
So I think I'm going to actually turn off uh, this microphone real quick, but I'm going to keep recording just for the sake of uh, the, like OBS. Um. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like it finally began. The match between... Um, well, they decided not to wait. What's going on here? Someone's DMing me. Hello? Ugh, leg. I can't read this DM. Alright, whatever. So we got a lead lax uh, versus a cloister. I'm just gonna go back to that one turn. It's not the end of the world if we're behind by one turn. And we have, uh, yeah, lead lax versus cloy. Which might suggest that Hyoga has his uh, trademark Sleep Talk Lax in the back, which he doubles straight to, so um, good call by me. But uh, generally, you have a lead uh, Cloy when you have something like Blissey or Raikou in the back, but uh, considering Hyoga uses Sleep Talk Lax, um, it's not completely uncalled for. And Kenix, or Eduardo Carapinga, is slowly setting up here with his Snorlax. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Who, who that? Who who just joined the chat? Okay. Um, yeah, so we do have a lovely Kiss Lax. Um, someone just quickly joined the chat and I got distracted there. But uh, lovely Kiss EQ, so no rest. So that Toxic is going to be the end of that Snorlax. But um, it's also in range of a double edge here. So uh, Yoga can go for the double edge himself and hope to dodge a thunder from Zapdos. Maybe Kenix is gonna come in and threaten. But uh, yeah, we we did see that the Tyranitar was completely put out of commission, so maybe this is um, a normal wall breaker Snorlax from Kenix's end with the aim to open up uh, for something like uh, another type of uh, normal sweeper or anything that might just benefit from Steelix or Tyranitar being out of the way, so uh, even a uh, Psychic type, which wouldn't be unlikely, but yeah, we're about to, we're about to find out. And um, as I close my eyes one sec, and look away from the screen. Kenix still has to decide what he's gonna bring in here. So, this Snorlax should be at 24%. We can't really see for sure if the Snorlax has slightly less than that, but it has yet to recover leftovers, which means that it's still sort of in range from Zapdos, but it's a high roll Thunder. The Thunder misses though. And the next time Snorlax is coming in, it could survive unless something happens with this uh, with these spikes here. So the spikes are going to be very crucial, um, as the Snorlax will stay in range of a Zapdos Thunder. In comes the Steelix here on an incoming uh, T Bolt. So we're about to see if that's Hidden Power Water. It's not, and the Steelix is slowly going to set up as it takes a cup a bit of chip damage. Um, and explodes on the Zapdos, taking it out. So if, mind you, we, we said that it's a best of five. If Kenix wins three games in this best of five, he will be declared the champion of the GSC Invitational. Whereas Hyoga will, if Hyoga wins, then it's another story. But yeah. So in comes Nito, which um, we'll see now if it's it's leftover. So uh, it's somewhat in range here. It could be a counter Nito King. No, no counter, meaning that the Zapdos is gonna very much threaten the team. In fact, this entire team is super threatened by Zapdos right now. Um, 
So it's not looking very good for Hyoga right now. In comes Espeon, so as I had uh, predicted correctly, the Espeon is going to be equally threatening, if not more. It speed ties with the Gengar. Kenix makes an optimal double into this Gengar. This reminds me of a team I once used. Um, and it booms on the Snorlax, so yeah, a lot of value uh, to be gained here. In fact, this is quite a fast game one. I would say that the game is pretty much over at this point. There's not really much uh, that um, Kyoga can do. He can pretend to threaten a boom with the Cloister, perhaps, but I'm not even sure at this point. Tyranitar could wake up and maybe have Crunch. That's, the, that's his only chance of winning here. Uh, but no wake up, so yeah, this game ended very quickly. Um, Hidden Power Water Espeon, in fact, so that's game one. That's game one. So as we wait for game two, ahoy there, Mr. Pirate. Ahoy. How's it going? Very well, thanks. I'm that very was dominating from uh, Kenix. Yeah, that was a very good. Um, that was a pretty good double into the Gengar. I, I mean, if you can call it a double, how he switched into Gengar on the explosion from. Since S yeah, I mean, Kyoga didn't really have many other options there, but it was still a good raid. Yeah, it was a good raid. Yeah, uh, I think. One way or the other, it wasn't really too taxing for Kenix because worst case scenario, if he had stayed in with Espeon, he still has a Gengar to threaten the rest of the team with. So it was a sort of a win-win. Yeah, but I think Gengar was less likely to be able to secure the KO on Norlax. Yep. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So, um, are you pretty excited to see this uh, grand finals? Yeah. Okay. Really Who do you think will win? Uh, um, after that first game, it's hard to go against Kenix. All right. All right. Yeah, it's kind of. It's kind of a little bit late to, to ask for it, but here is game two. So this time, uh, oopsies, nope, wrong game, wrong game again. Um, this time Hyoga opting to go for a uh, Nido King lead. So. Um, this could be, could be Thief Nido, but it's too early to tell. Do you have any predictions on... Do you want to make any predictions on, like, what type of Snorlax set he could have? Um, no, not at this stage. Oh, no. All right, all right. Very so, poor start for Yoga. Interestingly enough, we do I see... Uh, yeah, kind of a kind of heat... <laughs> kind of heat set with... Um, Dynamic punch Neo King, but that doesn't go well for him. Oof. Already, that's a that's a huge lead for Kenix. Yeah, this is uh looking really bad <laughs> for Yoga. He's uh he's used used two anti-offense Snorlax leads in a row. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. That's pretty crazy, though. I'm actually going to lower my mic volume here. So, the... I feel like Zapdos could... I don't know if it's in Kenix's interest to stay in here. If he has something better to switch into, he could just sacrifice the Cloister. Okay, so it's... Hmm... I don't think I've seen T-Wave Zapdos alongside a 
double-edged thunder Snorlax. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, it is a sleep talk, Snorlax, so... Hmm. That so... Starmie is... That's bad news for Hugo. Yeah, very much so. Really good at countering uh, these types of uh, Needle Gar TTR offense. And I think Especially... my money... My Twice money... Already gone. Yeah. I think that in the back there's a Marowak too. I think could be it could be it's it's definitely a sweeper of some sort. I say definitely, but I don't know. Mm, good pick. Cuz yeah, I was expecting a uh, yeah, there it is. There's the Marowak. Looks like it's getting at least two KOs here. Yeah. Yeah, the Zapdos. Uh, is it in range? It might be in range. Am I a turn behind? Is he in range of an Ice Punch? Was that what you were wondering? He is. He's, it's, it's a... It's a oh. Okay. I Yeah, I am a turn behind here, actually. So, I, I did join... A little bit late intentionally so that might be the case here i'm gonna actually speed up a bit there's no at, at least when i find a good opportunity but the um hyoga's what are hyoga's outs here probably gengar having to put in a lot of work gengar and t-tar uh, together say it's the has to Avoid paralysis and hopefully flinch the Snorlax. Yeah. I've seen it been done. Although it's going to be difficult without spikes. Yeah. You can't, you can't use roar without just giving something leftovers. That's a really interesting Starmie set. Oh, there's the pair on the T-Tar. So no recovery on Starmie, but it has spin and T-Wave. So T-Wave to spread paralysis as, as an offensive support for Marowak and rapid spin as defensive support. Yep. It's looking like a Snorlax on Lax. Oh, it's Curse Talk. It's not good. I think this is probably pretty over. I don't know why he's staying in with Snorlax. I feel like he should be going to Gengar. Could he doesn't want this to get low. Yeah. Especially since the Gengar can definitely withstand a Tar, even if Hyoga were to predict somehow. Like, what's what's Hyoga yeah. gonna do here? Hyoga can't stay. Um... Okay, so that's mean look Gengar. That might have been why he didn't oh. bring it in earlier. Yep. Hmm. So he's. It looks like he wants to PP stall. That. I that might make Gengar dangerous. Actually, if Gengar booms this lax, then Zapdos would have a good shot. Yeah, that's true. So, 
Um, for the record, the amount of money that will be going to the uh, players are, if I'm not mistaken, 57 yeah, $57 to first place and $34.2, $34.20 to the second place player, which is about, which is 30% of the uh, total prize pool. Unless someone were to magically donate in the over the course of this best of five, Zapdos only has three thunders left. I don't think this game is going to be going to to Yoga here. It's still not out of the question. All right, it's probably over now. Okay, the Gengar got paralyzed, but he did manage to put the Starmie to sleep, for what that's worth. Not much. Actually... And the Gengar booms, too. I don't know how he keeps doing that. Maybe okay, that just... one was... I think that one was harder to predict than the other one. Yeah. Felt like it. Are they speed clicking here? What? What's? These turns are going by so quick. Yeah, they are. Like I'm not even having any time to look into what they have to say. I I just made a two correct predictions on the team structure of Kenix so far. So that's at least I can feel proud of myself. Also, hello, Fong. But yeah, either Hyogo works some sort of miracle. Oh, there's the uh, Titar in on the Gengar. Oh, the... oh wow. I think Snorlax wins. Yeah, Hyogo Snorlax can actually turn this whole thing around. He's going to need a double-edged crit now. I'm still behind somehow. No, oh, we got one. This is not good for the... For the spectators. Yeah, wow, okay. Hyoga just turned this around because I guess... It went... Wait... Oh, but there's the crit. Just as I said that Hyogo was going to win this, then then uh, Kenix gets the crit. So when you said, oh, he got one, you must have been referring to that. Yeah. Dang. It's not that unlikely. No, it isn't. It isn't. Especially with Nolax having to rely on flip top there. Yeah, it, it started off a little bit lowered too. I can see a GSCPL game starting. <laughs> I kind of want to go over that. What? Hmm. What exactly made it that made it so that? Uh... What was it that compelled Kenix to bring in his Gengar, which was the only thing protecting him from that lax? Since... Which like, turn? Uh, on the turn where Hyoga brought in his T-Tar, it looked like for a second that Hyoga was going to win and just re do Snorlax things. Didn't... Wait, I guess there's no time to say that because the new the other game started. So game three, uh, Kenix has two wins. So this will be the tournament life that Hyoga has to fight for here. 
He has to win three straight games and then another set to take home the trophy. The other set will be on a different day should that occur. We got Eggy on Eggy. So that's pretty cool. Hmm. I'm wondering if it's convenient for an eggy to, to sleep powder and another eggy. Hmm. It is if you boom on the sleep talker after, I guess. Because Yoga stays in, he booms. Oh my. Boom. Two booms and two turns. Three turns. Okay. Um, the music disappeared. Everything disappeared. We do have uh, a sub from Jinx put freezing the Zapdos. My, oh, my. The Jinx may very well be lovely kiss as it freezes, as it puts the cloister coming into sleep. And now I can only imagine that the Jinx is going to go for Ice Beam again, take out that Zap. And this is looking like curtains. Like the tournament may just end here, ladies and gentle folk. It's just my voice that you hear right now. Titar surviving and taking out, okoing that um, Jinx there. In comes Machamp. Literally the only thing that could win Hyoga the situation back, but no, it's a boom lax. It self-destructs right on that. Oh my. And we see growth Vaporeon. This is uh with Hydro Pump, so it's in two hit KO range. This is uh this is pretty much gonna be the end here. It's a T Tar versus whatever's in the back. In comes Steelix. Steelix can EQ and KO and that is the game. This was a speed run of a grand finals. Congratulations to Kenix for winning the fastest best of five. So it's a GSC uh, any percent world record here. And it's also the first place prize of the GSC Invitational. The very first. Um, as And Hyoga is the runner up. So. That's uh that's pretty crazy. It looks like he managed to uh hold things together, although I do have to say that that game 2 was pretty clutch. Game 3, I don't know what Hyogo was thinking though. It was rather unfortunate. Um but good of him to get all the way here. I'm going to congratulate him. Maybe I will ask him to join the voice channel if he thinks that's a good idea. But while we do that, let's put the music back. That is our first GSC Invitational winner, first ever tournament. Um, involving 32 very strong players. He will be awarded with bragging rights, and I'm going to see if I can get an interview with him. Wait, actually, I'm just going to tag them on Discord real quick.
That was a really fast game. I didn't even have time to freaking catch up to this. Yeah, it's it's a rather modest prize, but let's see what we get. If I don't get a, um, an interview soon, I will be uh, closing the uh, the voice channel in the stream. And yeah, so basically we'll just, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can get a recording with these two players some other time. That's, it looks like, um, they both disconnected, so it's going to be very difficult reaching to them. Anyways, uh, thanks to um, Earthworm also for uh, hosting the entire event. Not just commentating on the grand finals with me here. He managed to make it despite everything. But also shoutouts to TC. Shoutouts to all of the players that joined. So I'm actually going to mention each of them right now. So we have, um, not in order, we have Zakuru, friend of Mr. Golem, Tony Flygon, Astamatitos, Tricking, Dice, Mr. 378, our third place player, Mr. E, Podgis, Taiga, Blightbringer, McMegan, Fakes, XyloXX, False, TC, who joined us earlier, Markop, Starmaster, HSA, Vileman, TDK, Lax, Raichi, Amdragon, Hyogafodex, Oibaf, Kenix, of course the winner, and Conflict. And also the play in players. So Alice, the Patat Deuce, Nolorium, Gary Oak, Finchinator, Eden, Vanny, and of course, Lord Thorx. Thank you all for being here. So it looks like Kenix will be joining us soon. Also, thank you to the um, moderators. Thanks also to Callus uh, and the Patat Deuce for moderating File 13 as well as Eladir, who've been doing more of the work than, than I've been doing as far as this tournament is concerned. I really thought that this tournament was going to last longer. <laughs> so for any of the viewers out there, um, I'm basically just talking at this point to fill in the empty <laughs> void that this hey, tournament is going to leave behind. Do you hear me, bro? Hello, Kenix. Hey, bro. Congratulations, How are man. You? I'm good. What about Thanks, you? How man. do you feel? Um, I feel excited because it's like the big two, the first big two I win. So yeah. All right. It's it's exciting. Well, much deserved. I'm so I'm glad to see that, and uh, I was excited to see this. I was somewhat hoping for a second set, uh, at least for you know from a spectator's perspective. But from a commentary's yeah, perspective, I, I was hoping for I, a quick I set. I was hoping, I was hoping not to play a second set because prepping a best of five match is a bit tiring, to be honest. Uh, yeah, but this set was faster than most best of three sets <laughs> yeah we both played a lot of offense teams 
actually my my next thing the game 14 was a bit stall so uh, it would be a, a long match there but I hope uh, well we achieved to end before that happened so it was fast yeah because we both I, I knew he was playing offense as he as he usually does yeah and I tried to and I tried it too so it was a, a fast match yeah yeah so um, we got for for what it was worth like what we were able to actually commentate we had a, a lotus lotus pirate or a earthworm here commentating with me on uh, some of these plays but the games were so fast it was it was kind of hard to to keep up with i'm not um, do you think you managed to uh, stay ahead of uh, Hyoga in every moment of the game, at least from a, if not from a play style perspective, from a mental perspective, or did you feel like you were yeah, getting I mean, ahead? I mean, I I know it was a bit a bit fast because um, I had a lot of practice already with the team, and I quite knew what. Uh, was the best play or what I thought was the best play um, in those situations but also I I think yeah I could uh, manage to be ahead of the matches uh, from the early game like I don't know the that's not like uh, lovely key set in game one put me yeah. ahead quite early uh, that counter on cloister game two and game three that boom well game three was so fast with that booms with exit so yeah i mean they were fast but i knew they were i was going uh, i was being in a better position in those fast moves than than him so i wasn't worried a lot about that um i have a question which leads into another one so is part of the reason why you brought these um offense teams for the first three games um due to the fact that maybe you're in a hurry for something or like maybe it's like late for you right now i'm not sure what your time zone is and i'm, I'm not even sure yeah, i know where you're yeah from. it's it's like it's midnight right now but okay. i mean it's not it's not like a reason that because i could have a schedule a schedule for another time but this time specifically fits better for me because it, like it's weekend i want to pre the matches and as it's sunday and tomorrow i have to to get up early i know i'm not going to be out you know so i know i can get my matches done and i don't i don't really mind about getting a uh, wake up at, okay like getting up like later because i already know this is gsc this is a best of five and this could take a lot of time but and i i knew there there were some consequences in playing this time <laughs> but the, that didn't didn't worry me a lot so no wait so what is your nationality if i may ask uh, i'm a spanish bro okay bro i'm sorry if i didn't uh if i didn't know or remember but uh I mean, having to deal with yeah, lots yeah. of players, I, I don't think... This is probably the first time I interact with you for for a bit and that I've paid close attention to your games because... I, um, anyways, I'm, yeah. I'm very... I was very excited to see this, so I'm glad... Uh, I'm glad yeah, that you're going to be bro. going home with this uh, prize. This is probably... Is this the biggest prize you've ever won mm, yeah I, I mean it's not the first prize because well of of this side i mean discord and the small one and that stuff yeah it is but from facebook i achieved to win some other prizes but it was like 40 if i remember correctly so yeah this is the biggest all right all right a facebook tournament <laughs> Maybe I should organize one of you those know. in the in the future. <laughs> Screw Discord. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Earthworm. 
How you doing? Hey, congratulations. Thanks, man. Yeah, you know you you spied me my uh, with my game do game two team because oh, yeah I, uh, I, I saw I saw you. your your star me set from one of your teams mm. with that soup thunder wave and I found it really interesting to pair it with Marwak so yeah I liked it I liked the idea yeah I mm. that that was really peculiar so I expected thunder wave what i didn't expect was uh it to be no recovery and to have substitute because when i saw substitute and rapid spin i actually ruled out thunder wave even though that was yeah. something i expected for this team because um in the game two team you use something that i've seen since the i don't know like a tournament in a different Discord server where, like, Finchinator yeah. and Georgie used uh, Flame Lax and then Cloyster and Starmie and then Marowak. And that was mm -hmm. one of the first times I saw that. I was like, oh, it was almost a ditto, too. And, but, but it was not that Starmie set, no? No, it was not that particular starmy set but the idea behind it is that you have paralysis spread spikes and then spikes control with starmy yeah or that was the point yeah that was the point of the team but i like uh, this particular set because with substitute on thunder wave i can guarantee uh, a paralysis on Zapdos why not uh, being dead for example and i don't think uh, recovery is that important in this team I mean, it would be good to have it, but I think I can sacrifice it because uh, I I prefer that substitute Thunder Wave and a Spin Control, and I can uh, yeah. break already with Marwak. Yeah, I'm assuming that the last move is uh, Surf, or no? Uh, it was psy Psychic. Oh, dang. I, I like Psychic <laughs> there because substitute with Psychic it's good for for Gengar, so mm, yeah. But that could be pretty bad for uh, Titar. Yeah, I know, Steelix I know. Steelix even. <laughs> oh. But but your uh, the your set was psychic without without surf too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting though. That's that's actually an interesting take. Was that specifically because you felt that Hyoga would bring that or? Was uh, no, were you actually, already uh, using this sort of team and experimenting? Actually, I built this uh, before Kyoga and Mister Numbers played uh, okay. because I I came up with the idea and I also like how uh, earthquake spam in general. I think it's very spammable, spammable versus offense teams and. I thought it would be good to use it in finals if I could uh, came up with a with a good team, and I test I tested this team a lot in ladder and it was having great results. So I was like, I don't care who is my opponent, I'm going to break this, and this is going to be this is going to do good for sure. Yeah, you you did almost get reverse swept though. What was the mean look uh, Gengar there for? Because it must be mean look. And I, I would imagine that it has like one no, it was... out of two between like Paris Song and Destiny Bond, maybe both. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's that said the uh, Ice Punch, Mean Luck, Paris Song, and what was the last? Ice Punch, Mean Luck, Paris Song. I don't think we saw many other moves besides Destiny Bond. Destiny Bond? I think it was Destiny, uh, yeah, Destiny Bond. Bond. Yes. Yeah, Destiny Bond is it's how you like, took out the T-Tar. We, we only saw the two moves. Yeah, well, it was Mean Luck also and, and Paris Song because uh, this team uh, struggles a bit versus Snorlax. So mm. uh, it was, uh, I think, it I need, was like forced to go with that set uh, with Gengar. Mm. Yeah, I do. I think you have it. Yeah, I mean, I, I was in a bad position at the end. But I think, uh, I mean, if you look at the roles, 
uh, to Marowak with Zapdos. Marowak uh, should have mm -hmm. tanked uh, the the hidden power, so yes. that's why I saw stance there, there. Yeah, because my plan was getting getting up my attack, killing tanking the hidden power, killing the Zapdos, and then uh, earthquake would have killed the the Snorlax. But yeah, I think it, it, it survives hidden power so... at fifty percent, I believe. Yeah, yeah I think I mean, it probably it's, more. it's a very very favorable favorable role for me. But anyways, yeah. I got I, I anyways got lucky at the end with that uh, sequence versus Snorlax with mine. So yeah, it was it was fair. Mm -hmm. I, I think with that Marowak play, you had probably about an eighty-seven percent chance of winning on that uh, Lord's Dance into Rock Slide and Earthquake at the end. Yeah, yeah especially I was... considering Zapdos could have full been fully paralyzed, so you could have come out of that completely. Um, unscathed whatsoever. Um, the worst that Eric, um, Erica Hyoga could have done at that point would have been to explode with Gengar, and I don't know if that's an Oko. Might be. Yeah. Uh, not not this not this turn. It was like towards the end, like the very end. Wait. Yeah, I mean in the very end, the most uh, well, the play I was most scared about was when we were Sabdos versus Sabdos. I was yeah. scared about him him going rest because if he rested he could have a slip type uh hidden power my Marowak or something. Mm -hmm. So I wanted I wanted to, to be killed by his Sabdos. That's why I will win at the end instead of killing the Sabdos. Uh, to give my, my Marowak the chance to to come to set in. up. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, he was looking really good. Uh, I'm still. I yeah. can't find the turn though, for some reason. It's, the, the the turn, it's at the very end. Oh, well, there it is. There it is. Before my. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that rest would have been the key here. Yeah, rest would actually looks really bad for you if Yoga had clicked rest here. Yeah. Because that's what I was scaring scared about yeah and i think that's the play he should have done because it gave him more odds than just killing my Zardos. yeah Definitely. because you could you could a risk marowak or b your only other option really besides maybe staying in with zap is going to snorlax and he's already yeah. low on sleep talks low on rests and then I don't know. Hyoga could either bring in his lax. Yeah, at if that I point. if I brought if I brought the Snorlax in and um killed the Zapdos, for example, I was uh, in the same position that I was in the end. Yeah, yeah. Hyoga doesn't even, to, doesn't even need to doesn't even need to switch in to Snorlax to predict here. Yes, because you don't have curse, so he can take a hit. Set and set up. Yeah, I, I, basically, I basically needed to to yeah. risk Marowak if he risked it. Yeah, and he, he only had to think, to hit him power with a slip type Shogo. once from two turns. Yeah, I, I think this was. I think Shogo Fodex's plan here was to just get to last month's Norlax, but he didn't see the. I don't think he saw the Marowak play. Yeah, it could yeah, be. I possibly. guess so. So did you um? Uh, build all by yourself? Did you end up uh, building specifically for this uh, grand finals on yourself on your own, well, or did you I... ask for like support? Like, is there anyone you want to make a shout out to? Uh, yeah, I'd like to shout out M Dragon because he has hey. helped me with those with those teams. Like game one team, uh, it was completely on him. I asked him for a. Uh, Akus, Lovely Kiss, Earthquake, Snorlax team. And he gave me that, I think it's from Anti. I changed uh, the sets because of my liking. And then the other the other, the other, other teams were just built uh, uh, by me. You know, with some, inspired with some other teams like Game 2 uh, Game from Earthgroom. But um, he also checked them. He helped me to 
to uh, improve some sets and that stuff. So a big, big shout out to M Dragon. Yeah, fellow national. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. The, the the cool thing, the thing I like is that I knew the team. I didn't know what the team was, but I was like, okay, I see Curse, I see Double Edge, I see EQ, and I see Lovely Kiss. So I'm thinking this is like a, this is probably like a conflict team. So the Snorlax is a wall breaker for something, and I said it, uh, like a normal type, but I'm like, is he really going to use Ursaring? Nah, he's not using Ursaring. <laughs> so the you, uh, you probably knew it, or it probably was in your head because we faced uh, quite a lot in ladder. I was with my alt, so you probably oh. knew <laughs> some of my teams. No, but the funny thing really is, knowing it. I don't. I if you, I probably got upset at you or something on ladder and quit early, but um. I saw this team and I'm like, oh, it's Espeon and Gengar. Wait a minute. I have a team just like this one that I used uh, in yeah, 2018. Yeah. I, think, I think it's it's a famous team. I think I, uh, M Dragon, for example, himself also used it versus Siatam, if I remember if I remember okay. correctly. Oh, okay. And it okay. was a, a, a famous team from Anti, I think. So yeah, but you I, probably no, I, I didn't I didn't build at least I don't have any memory of me building it in uh after having seen some replay. But my version was pretty much this team, but instead of EQ, Lax and Curse, it had Fire Blast and Self Destruct. But there was a growth espion and a gang and a Gengar. And the idea is that the Gengar is supposed to weaken T Tar so that way Espeon could sweep but you, and then with snorlax you kind of just take care of uh those sweepers or snorlax himself so so i said this snorlax is a wall breaker for a normal type or a special sweeper like a psychic type and there it was i was like oh good call oh, so you were you were right bro yeah oh man i'm on point what about what about game three? I had zero time whatsoever to just uh, comment on anything. Like I was, yeah, okay. Uh, game three was really really fast because I was using a uh, this team I specifically uh, built uh, against Hyoga because I okay. scouted him and I knew uh, well. I thought uh, executor. Uh, with a boom because I'm pink bow for just uh, having a big big roll to kill a Snorlax. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not every that, day you see uh, with, on Lax with the boom. I think. Yeah. I it's was a, wondering it's a that. Low roll without without that detail. Yeah, it's a roll. I was wondering though. I was like, hmm. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, and I knew that Executor uh, paired with Jinx or Vaporeon could do good. If I just boomed uh, to into his uh, sleep, uh, stalk. So I was just okay. This match has to be booming turn turn one, but it uh, result that he was using also executor lead. So he was booming my my Zapdos turn two. So I was like, okay, you boom my Zapdos, but then I want to boom your Snorlax. So we are playing a four versus four match. So that's uh, why it was really, really fast because it yeah. wasn't a six versus six; it was a uh, four versus four, and the other four was were just like uh, offense yeah. mode. So yeah, you you did get the freeze, but honestly, the freeze wasn't. Um, yeah, I mean, like it was. It definitely mattered. It would be a lie to say that it didn't because. Hyoka can't keep the Zapdos for something like Vaporeon in the back, but yeah, or break or just breaking the the soup, for example. Yeah, but like the Thunder missed anyways, so it looked like either Zapdos or whatever else was in the back was was gonna get it was gonna get hit really hard. Um, yes. Yeah, and the fact that you but boomed on the last. Honestly, is... without without his 
his own lacks, my jeans was looking so dangerous. Oh, yeah. Like with uh, with lovely keys, I can can just uh, claim one because if I if I kill the Zapdos, even if he breaks my soup or whatever, he has no Snorlax with his Snorlax was uh, for sure sleep tag, so he has no sleep tag uh, there in the back to to uh, tank the lovely key so he had to go cloister yeah he would have needed and three then... sleep talkers but that would have been weird. yes yes that's the point yeah so so yes i think it was already in my favor because my plan was was that with the team was taking the sleep talker and it went it went good when i brought my jinx in and could and was forcing him to go Zapdos. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely matter. I don't know what would the match uh, look like without the freeze, but in my opinion, I was in a good position already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you were regardless. You had two. You were up two games, and uh, Hyoga was in a position where, really, I'm. I'm I can only imagine the nerves must have been uh getting to him and he was like okay i have to you know win three straight games and then a set and you know reset the bracket then win another best of five like okay yeah i mean i already used this team because i was already up because it's a quite risky team m dragon told me that uh, not to use it if i wasn't up in the match so that also included that in in that because as I was up, I could use that this risky team, and I was already confident that if I didn't win this match, I had a lot of a lot of games left. Yeah, for sure. Hydro pump is also pretty cool. There. That's uh, yeah. I mean, seems like you have I, a million I, I... ways to take care of Snorlax. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because it's it was important with the with this team because a lot of things are walled by Snorlax. If you see like when ah oh, well it it wasn't. No, I was saying uh, another thing. But yeah, it was it was important to take care of Snorlax because Jinx and Vaporeon needs a lot of a lot of support with that. Although Executor aims to kill the Snorlax, if I don't achieve to do it, I could be in a in a tricky situation. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Wow, that was that was so much insight on this, uh... and and that should just go to show you that GSC is not just some stupid stall tier like look at look at all of this boom offense like forget the turn count but yeah to to be honest uh, lately gsc has become like in my opinion one of the most offense tiers because like everybody is running offense the match the matches are are faster than ever and it's so funny to play this to be honest i don't understand people than than i don't know don't agree with GSC just because they think they are long matches, and this is fun if you if they try it. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, um, we've found our outs, and this game has been around for so long that we've managed to optimize it. It's it's not unlike how um, in other games where people. I remember the how infamous Jigglypuff was in Super Smash Bros. Melee. And Hungry Box was the best, and he'd always win. But people started to figure yeah. out ways to beat that, you know. So yes, by playing even more aggressively, you know. Yeah, there's... it's insane how how the tier is evolving. Uh, although it has been here from a long t from a long time already, and it's uh, still changing and and evolving. It's so cool to see that. Yep. Okay. So we'll have Callus uh, s send you over the money when the, when the time comes for that. And um, I'm also seeing 
I'm still on smog tours right now. It seems that Soul Wind won the millionth smog on tour and twenty five dollars. So you want you're winning two times that and and then some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I wanted to see the match, but when I saw Game Three, Chansey versus Chansey, I was like, "Okay, we we'll start now," yeah. <laughs> because that was for sure long. Yeah, no, that would have been that would have taken way too long. Okay. Um. Anyways, for the viewers back home, I hope. Well, there we have it. You know, that's our um. That's our nice little set, and we have our nice interview. I hope you guys have all enjoyed. As for the players, I hope uh, the same as well. I've already made my uh, shout-outs to all of those um, involved in this uh, GSC Invitational. Thanks again to Earthworm, who is here with us, I think, still, for uh, hosting this. You know, it wouldn't have been possible without you. Any second. Yeah. No, he's not going to reply. That's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, for those back home watching this, you know, stay stay in tune for some some more GSC stuff. Goodbye to everybody. And goodbye. Have a nice, a nice day. Yeah, have a nice day to you too. Like have a nice evening, I guess. I I imagine that you're really tired and wanna yeah wanna go to sleep <laughs> or something. Yeah, for for sure. I'm so tired myself. All right, I've been Cherry Bong, and this was the GSC Invitational. So thank you all, and bye bye. GGS and I love you. <laughs>